Hey guys, it is Scott the Steenroller Steen with winnersandwiners.com. It is Friday, the 12th of July. You've made it through the week. Let's celebrate by betting on some baseball. What do you say? But before we do that, if you guys would just take a minute and smash that like button, give us the thumbs up. I will give you a preemptive uh, thank you for taking care of that business. Of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, terrific opportunity to do just that. Hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, get notified every time we put up brand new content. Um, check out winnersandwinners.com if you're looking for a second or third opinion. It is a terrific deep dives, predictions, previews, picks every single game, every single day. The best part is, it is for free. So it is absolutely no cost to you. So make sure you take advantage of that great resource. Looking for premium plays, you can check, click the description. Uh, click the link in the description of today's video to grab mine, or if you're uh, uh, he's like, I don't like that guy. Uh, he's an idiot. I watch him, but I still don't like him. Well, we got a lot of other great handicappers over there at Winners and Winners. Click the Experts tab and see who's hot in whatever sport you might be looking at. Um, okay, so let's uh, talk about yesterday's action. We did have the Chicago Cubs and uh, the Baltimore Orioles under nine. Uh, I would not call it a rocking chair. That was a uh, that was a nail biter for sure. Uh, they got to eight after seven, and we were able to uh, dodge a couple of bullets there late in the game. If you're watching that, uh, I don't know what Mullins was doing. Uh, just kind of made an art form out of standing around in the center field, not knowing where the ball was there in the in the ninth inning. I didn't get it. Um, the Cubs uh, got a, a gimme double, but they were unable to get him in. And uh, uh, then we uh, went to the bottom of the ninth, Santander on first. And they drive a ball to center field and uh, goes basically over his head. Went off his glove. Should have caught it, probably. It would have been a good catch, not a great catch. Uh, anyway, didn't roll to the wall. And for whatever reason, Santander did not get a good jump. He ended up on third. Uh, the other guy was on uh, on second. And that's where they got stranded as uh, they were able to get the last out of the inning. So, yeah, we'll take it. You know, a lot of times the breaks don't go our way and we will acknowledge the gambling gods, when they do, shout out gambling gods because we got one there uh, as that one stayed under the total of nine. But, you know, the motto is in this business, what have you done for me lately? So let's talk about this one. This is a battle of the National League teams. The Colorado Rockies travel to the Big Apple to take on the New York Metropolitans. We're going to play the Metropolitans a big time here. Going to take the Mets run line minus the 110. Tanner Gordon Goes for their axe. Stay down, Rack. Uh, against Sean Manaya, ex-Royal, for the New York Mets. You know, we've uh, we've done pretty good betting on Colorado. Uh, we've taken them, I think we've taken them three times on the road, and they've come through for us twice, which, you know, that's pretty impressive considering they've only won 13 road games so far this season. And remember, we're more than halfway done as we cruise into the All-Star break. Uh, officially, Colorado's 13 and 34 on the road. Um, but we're not backing them today, kids. Tanner Gordon, um, he's another one of these guys, and I've seen a few of these guys lately that are getting called up for in, due to injuries or whatever. You look at his minor league stats, you look what he's done, and you're like, I'm not really sure why this guy is in the majors. And Tanner Gordon's a, a perfect example of that. 615 ERA with a 146 whip in a seven starts there in uh, which way to Albuquerque uh, in the A. So, uh, yeah, not good. Made his debut last week against the Kansas City Royals at home there in Colorado. And he did not fare well. Five earned runs over six and a third, including giving up eight hits and a homer in what eventually became a 10-1 to defeat for the Rockies. Uh, one of the knocks on him is he does give up a lot of home runs. And that certainly has continued this season at both levels. Nine home runs in 32 innings in AAA. And as we mentioned, the one against Kansas City. And that is not ideal for a Mets team that can poke a few of them out. They rank fourth in the majors in round trippers. And don't forget, once Gordon leaves, we've talked about this on the on the plus side that we have to sweat this, and now we're rooting for him to suck. It's the bullpen of the Colorado Rockies. Uh, they are statistically the worst bullpen in the majors, uh, ERA and whip. So uh, case in point, when, they, when uh, Gordon pitched against Kansas City, Bullpen puked up five runs in just two and two-thirds innings, including giving up two dingers of their own. Um, as far as the Mets go, you know, this team was almost an, uh, an auto-fade early in the season, but those days are long gone. 
Uh, playing better, better ball. They won four straight, and they currently hold the uh, last wild card spot there in the National League. Shamanai is a guy who has always had good stuff, but the, 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 the knock on him, and it's still true to this day, uh, he doesn't throw enough strikes. Um, he's always been a, guy, been a guy that walks a lot of people, but against the Rockies, maybe not as bad as it should be because he's facing a Rockies team that is second to the last in the National League in drawing walks. Um, he's been remarkably consistent over the last five seasons. I, when I looked this up, this was pretty cool. Um, he has had an ERA that has gone from 369 to 443, not not in a, in a linear fashion, but it's been between those two numbers, inclusive, um, in, in five seasons. And he has a whip that has been between 120 and 129. Again, over a five-season stretch, that's those are pretty. That's remarkable consistency. It really is. Trust me, from a guy that looks at these numbers in Baseball Reference all day long, <laughs> I definitely take note of that. Um, Colorado's not showing any signs of getting any better on the road either. Uh, three and eight in their last eleven, and then they're facing a Mets team, as I mentioned, playing better ball, and they've been playing really good ball at home since the first of June, going twelve and four. Um, you know, this is a Colorado team facing a quality veteran starter. Um, and they're, they're sending out a rookie that is making his first road start and just his second start overall in the majors. They have the worst team in baseball when he runs out of gas. I think all points, all signs point to a big Mets victory here, and we're going to play it. You want to get froggy and play minus two and a half? I don't hate that either. But you know what? We're not getting out over our skis. We're just going to take the New York Mets on the run line minus the 110. And at the end of that one, you guys can join me as we pick up our winning tickets and head back to the window. All right, everybody. Again, have a fantastic Friday. Hope you have a great day. Uh, let's cruise on to the weekend with a big win. All right? We're we'll back tomorrow with the, uh, you know what I'm going to have tomorrow. It won't be one. It won't be two. I'll let your imagination run wild. We'll see you then.